Good morning, everybody. It's another episode of Intellectually Honest, unedited, uncut. We're going to get right into it. Before we get started, though, y'all know the deal. Go ahead, do all that stuff that the YouTube algorithm likes. Hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, and most definitely hit that notification bell so you'll be notified every time I drop. Looks like we picked up some more uh, subscribers from the last video. I really appreciate you guys deciding that my content is something you can rock with, and we're going to keep this thing going. We almost had 300 subs, and I appreciate every last one of y'all. But without further ado, you know the deal. We're going to go ahead and open up. So you know I saw the game last night. You know I saw the game last night, and you know I got some takeaways from it. Lonzo Ball and the Chicago Bulls hosted the Orlando Magic in their 7-31 and record. And the story of the night is Lonzo Ball makes his return. He was out due to the COVID health and safety protocol, which I thought for a while that he was going to be immune to, but no sooner than he said that, that he, he, he told us his secret for how he has uh, managed to stay healthy. Seems like a few days after that, he goes out with the health and safety protocol. So he probably janks himself, whatever, who knows, who cares, he's back and his IQ was on full display last night. Sheesh, this kid knows how to play basketball. But you know the deal. We're going to run through some stats real quick. Then I'm going to give you all my takeaways from the game. Uh, DeMar DeRozan, yet again, another very, very good scoring night with 29 points, three rebounds, two assists, a steal. 45.8% from the field. No threes hit. He took two, but he didn't hit any. 53.8% free throws, which isn't great, but he got there. And he had the highest plus minus on the team. Very, very good game for DeMar DeRozan. He clearly has something to prove, and he's proven it every single game. Nikola Vucevic, 13 points, 13.17 rebounds, one assist, two steals, two blocks. Great game by Vooch on the boards and on defense. Scoring the ball. He kind of fell back into the boots that we've been seeing, but it looks like he's found his rhythm doing other things. Like, like you can tell he's found his rhythm more so in the offense because he's putting himself in position to uh, to affect the game in different ways. He had 17 rebounds. Um, that's, that in and of itself is impressive in two blocks and two steals. So still a good game by Vooch, even though he was very inefficient scoring the ball. Uh, and he... <laughs> He, had, he actually ended with a uh, negative one in the plus minus column, which is very hard to do when your team wins. So Vooch needs to pick it up, but I'm not going to trash him because I like what I see overall. Zach Levine, another great scoring night. Zach, if you got Zach and you got DeRozan and you got Lonzo there, it's kind of like a release valve with his threes and as a high IQ decision maker and, and your best defender, on the on the team, like this this team is really looking scary. Um, the Levine, twenty seven points, three rebounds, a steal, forty two percent from the field, uh, forty four percent from three, amazing, amazing stuff. Seven out of seven from free throws, and yet he still had a negative ten. I wonder why though. Well, the three turnovers might have something to do with it, but who knows? Great game in my books from uh from Zach Levine. Now. Lonzo Ball, the number one son, the reason why we're here, made his triumphant return from the health and safety protocol. Let's see how he did. He did not score the ball very well at all by any stretch of the imagination. I don't care how you flip it, how you turn it, how you analyze it, how you dig into it. He did not score the ball well. He only had three points and he only hit one field goal out of eight attempts. Not good, but I'm not going to panic because we know that Lonzo Ball is an absolute sniper. And that's just this is probably just a one-off. But the beauty of Lonzo Ball. You see, if somebody like a Zach Levine or DeMar DeRozan or a Brandon Ingram or somebody like that has a cold shooting night, that's it. They're not affecting the game in any way. They're a non-factor, pretty much. But Lonzo Ball, our boy. Because he is who he is and because he's a stat sheet stuffer supreme, he had a great game and his impact could be felt all over. 
Let's get into it. He had seven rebounds, seven assists, three steals. Sheesh. When I say this guy, if he does, if he's not in the conversation for defensive player of the year, then I'm convinced that the league has something against Lonzo Ball. Um, I mean, that's just what it is. This kid is incredible defensively. Six rebounds, only two turnovers. He had a positive three. Look at that. Oh, he only <laughs> he shot 12.5% from the field and had a positive three. Him and DeRozan are the only two players that had a positive plus minus in a win. And Lonzo Ball shot terrible and still had a positive plus minus. That goes to show you just how much positive things he's doing on the floor to help this team win. But casual basketball fans don't notice that, so they think he's trash. And I'm telling you, this dude is an elite point guard, and his scoring is going to come back around, and and uh, the playoffs is going to be exciting. Um, so that's about it that I'm going to get into. The bench, uh, you know, Kobe White. Uh, yeah, another great scoring game from Kobe White. I really hope he can keep it up. Uh, like I said in previous videos, go research the log. I don't see Kobe White being on this roster by the time the league, by the time the season ends. But um, I'm really happy with what I'm seeing from Kobe White and how he's kind of getting his rhythm back and his scoring punch off the bench. Great, great, great game by Kobe White. Um, and he himself also had a positive three, uh, plus minus. So that's about it. Everybody else did pretty standard stuff. Uh, DJJ had seven points, five rebounds. Um, yeah, great, great game by the Bulls. Um, so I got a couple takeaways from this thing. Just a, just a handful of them. Now, this isn't going to be a long video, but first takeaway is Lonzo Ball's IQ is off the charts. I mean, let's just call it what it is. Lonzo Ball may indeed be the smartest basketball player in the league. Uh, I wouldn't say outside of LeBron, but LeBron James, I'll, I'll still give him his prop because he's the king. Outside of LeBron, I'd probably say he's he's probably the highest IQ player in the league. And I'm telling you that this kid is going to take his game to such an, uh, another level in the playoffs. It's people are gonna it's and all of those fans that were hyped up by what LeVar was saying in the in his pre-draft hype. I think after the playoffs hit and they see what he does and he's on that big stage and the mainstream media can't shove him up under the rug, I think that all of those fans that jump ship are going to all come back and try to jump back on the bandwagon. It's fine. It's space. Lonzo Ball's bandwagon is, you know, enormous. It's plenty enough. Uh, it's plenty of space. So uh, I'm just happy that he made a triumphant return. I mean, he was making plays out there. The it's just it's oh uh, man he made he had a full court pass to Zach Levine he kills those full court passes um he had a full court pass to Zach Levine for an easy bucket it's just he makes the game so simple and another thing I noticed uh regarding Lonzo Ball even though he was just not coming back I, I noticed that Billy Donovan had is fine I think what the confidence that Billy Donovan Donovan is trying to instill in Lonzo Ball is finally starting to to take. Because I see Lonzo Ball passing it off to DeMar DeRozan less to bring it up court. I feel I see Lonzo Ball taking the ball of himself and believing in his own ability to, uh, I think, more superior ability than DeMar DeRozan to initiate the offense. I saw a lot of that last night. And I'm really happy and that's really promising. Um, so, yeah, Lonzo Ball, as IQ is off the chart, I'd be really, really surprised if he's not in the defensive player of the year conversation it's just uh, it's if you didn't watch the game if you're just looking at the box score you'd be like oh it's not really that impressive but if you watch the game watch the game um i mean this you would think he had a triple double the way this dude was all over the all over the court so great 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 uh, great game by lonzo ball truly a, a transcendent player uh let's move on uh next takeaway um demar derozan I, while I said in my last video, I don't think he's the MVP. I think that's Steph Curry. DeMar DeRozan has proven something to me and to a lot of NBA fans alike. And that is that he can be counted on in club situation. I know it's probably laughable for me to have that take right now because it's like, dude, duh, ain't you been watching all season? I have, but I have also been watching DeMar DeRozan's career. And I've watched this dude get his soul snatched by LeBron James in the playoffs after having the best record in the regular season, after having the best record in Toronto Raptors history. I watched LeBron James come in there 
like the king that he is and snatched the Marty Rosen's soul. They had to, uh, the coach had to take the Marty Rosen out of the game because his soul was snatched. I never seen a sad as like, so the Marty Rosen is proven, he is proven. And let's not act like the Spurs were some dominant team last year or any of the years that the Marty Rosen was there. So he is proven that he is, he can be counted on in the clutch. Um, last night, I mean, he just made some shots. He just, his ability to hang in the air is, uh, and, and still hit the hit a balanced mid range shot. It's just incredible. Um, and it should be applauded. And that leads me to my next question regarding, I'm still on the same takeaway about DeMar DeRozan proving everybody wrong, but it sparks a question. And I already know the answer that people are probably going to say in the comments, but it's worth asking. Is DeMar DeRozan proven that he's better than Kawhi Leonard? And I know on surface level, they're like, all right, all right, skip, skip on to the next takeaway. But listen, hear me out. Kawhi Leonard benefited from a Raptors team that had great, great defense, more so than, um, than when DeMar DeRozan was there. They had a new coach. Um, if I'm not mistaken, uh, I think Nick Nurse might be a little bit better than, um, God, who's that guy? Can't rec I can't recall his name. I think he coached in Detroit for a while. I don't know if he's still the coach, but, um, but yeah, um, you know, so it's a, it was a little bit different situation for, 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 for Kawhi. And just looking at what we've seen Kawhi doing in LA with Pandemic P, how that situation kind of just fizzled out seeming like like those guys aren't even I mean I, I'm sure I'm pretty sure they're good but there's nobody out there thinking oh wow the Clippers might go all the way let's see I'm pretty sure they're doing all right and they're not they're very very average they're 19 and 19 right there with the oh man that Staples Center's crew jeez so yeah uh and is Kawhi even playing right now so it's like he's more durable than Kawhi that's not that's not that's just factual and um it just uh, sparked a question. Is DeRozan actually better than Kawhi Leonard? Let me know in the comments. I'll get active with you. I'll go back and forth with you. Uh, you know, I fully expect the comment section. Uh, if, if this is something you guys decide to discuss down there, I fully expect the comment section to be lean heavy toward Kawhi. Just off of what he was able to accomplish in Toronto. I mean, it's just, it's what it looked like. I know it looks like they just did a, a straight up trade for Kawhi and DeRozan and Kawhi is just better, so they want to ring, but I, it's more things than that. Um, but that's what it looks like. And I know a lot of people in the comment section are gonna go off that and, but just think about that for a sec. And uh, that's it for that. My last takeaway is that the Chicago Bulls are fully stacked Chicago Bulls with Lonzo Ball, Caruso when he comes back, everybody there is head and shoulders the best team in the Eastern Conference. And I said yesterday they were sitting happy with a full game ahead of the Brooklyn Nets. Now they're sitting even happier with two full games ahead of the Brooklyn Nets. And I think that lead is going to continue to grow. I don't think Kyrie Irving is going to make that big of a difference only playing away games. I mean... Because if you're being really, really, really real, they still have Kevin Durant and they still got James Harden. So, and they lost to the Memphis Grizzlies last night. So, they, they don't, it's not like they have scrubs out there on the court. They still have the they still have two of the um, most recent league MVPs, and they're still relatively in the primes of their careers. So there's really no you know excuse either way. And the Bulls, I think, just when you look at how they play, you look at how they're coached, you look at how they mesh together as a team, they're just better, man. Um, they're just better. And um, yeah, that's it. I fully expect them to come out of the East. Um, and I, I really hope you guys stay tapped in all the way through. Lonzo Ball is going to show a lot of people uh, he's, he's, I think, like I said, he's, he's very similar. I think he's going to be very sil similar to playoff Rondo. Uh, when you give him a chance to study a team and pick apart a team for uh, four games minimum, uh, I think you're going to see some some beautiful basketball from Lonzo Ball. So that's it for today. I hope you guys enjoyed the game. I hope you guys enjoyed the show. Intellectually Honest, another one in the books. Um, Y'all know the deal. Please hit that like 
button, that comment, uh, uh, comment and that subscribe button and that notification bell. And uh, we're going to keep this thing going and we're going to keep this thing growing. So I'll catch y'all in the next one. Thank you.